Hello, here's a quick video taking you through the single engine taxi procedures in the Airbus 320. We're here at London Luton, just pushed back from stand in our Airbus 320 with the CFM engine variant. Let's jump inside and uh, run through the checks. We've got the APU running. As you can see, we've started engine one. The Single engine taxis always conducted on engine one in the uh, Airbus 320. Uh, the reason for that is that the, the uh, yellow hydraulic system has a electric hydraulic pump, which uh, helps us to power this system when engine two is not running. So, as you see, we do have a uh, zero pressure on the uh, yellow hydraulic system and we've got the electric pump available. So we'll get that turned on, it's all the way back up here. Electric pump. Hear a bit of a, a whine sometimes in the cabin when that's operating. So it pressures up and you can see we're coming up to uh, 3000 PSI, the same as the green and blue systems. With the uh, yellow system not running uh, or unpressurized, we would have uh, no alternate braking, no part brake, uh, slow flap, movement uh, amongst other systems so it's important to get that one pressurized as well so the electric system helps us to operate those obviously with this single engine taxi configuration single engine taxi is conducted to, primarily to save fuel it can also save a bit of brake wear as well so we've got the APU operating um, primarily to uh, provide power to the engine fire extinguisher and, and also the galley um, whilst the APU bleed can supply pack 2 which is currently not got any airflow due to the ingestion of exhaust fumes we normally feed pack 2 from engine 1 so we'll open the cross feed valve here to allow pack flow air from engine 1 to also power pack 2 and ensure good distribution of airflow around the cabin you can see the fault light's gone out there and both packs are now operating. We will conduct the after start checklist once both engines are running. So we're going to simulate a, uh, sort of a bit of a delay part here at Luton due to high traffic. Um, so we'll have to wait at the holding point in turn for takeoff. We need to consider warm up times of the engines, so three minutes depending on your company SOPs. But uh, we're going with three minutes today. Obviously, we want to ensure that uh, we're ready to go at the appropriate time with the engine warmed up, ready for departure. So uh, we need to consider how long our delay is going to be. Things to note on single engine operations is with one engine shut down, obviously, the other engine will require higher thrust than normal so we need to consider jet blast and also the risk of foreign object da damage um, coming into the engine it might maybe picked up due to the higher thrust uh, slow and tight turns in the direction of the operating engine may be an issue at, especially at higher gross weights so uh, it, it, having the thrust in the direction of turn is, is not really your friend in a, in a tight turn so it's usually the opposite engine you'd use to, to get you around so that's something to consider and also as we just already talked about the, the warm-up times as well let's get taxied out and we'll complete the off start chest lists once we've uh, taxied out to the holding point Toby eye tracker on, clear left side, clear right side, and we'll taxi here via Bravo, sorry, via Foxtrot and Alpha. And we'll do a uh, check of the pressure. So I'm just looking down here at the uh, acupressure system, making sure that when we brake, 
we're on the normal system. That's quite important on uh, a single engine taxi. Clear right side, clear left side. So this could be an example of where at high gross weights we would have an issue in a, in a turn. Not today we're very light. We'll hold here at Alpha 3 and simulate a line of traffic ahead of us waiting for departure and we'll conduct the start procedure for the second engine. Park brake set. The park brake must be set for the start of engine number two. So we'll keep the uh, leave valve open for this. We we'll turn the electric hydraulic pump off, and the reason for that is um, the PTU on the hydraulic system will conduct a self-test on the startup. It will not do that with the electronic pump is on, so that comes off. The APU bleed comes on. And we'll wait 10 seconds before starting engine number two. And the reason for the delay is to ensure that the transit of the bleed valves is complete. So we don't cause an engine one stall. And then we'll go through to engine start now. So we simply move the uh, start switch across. And we go engine two start. EGT rise. Engine 2 avail. We'll start a timer now because we want to ensure we have the warm up time. Engine mode selector back to normal. APU is required, so that's no longer required. So that comes off. And we can see we've got both packs supplying. and the cross V valve will come to auto. We'll check ECAM status. And then we'd apply the normal after start procedure. Engine anti ice not required. ECAM status is checked. Pitch trim is checked and rudder trim is neutral. At this point we'd do the flight control checks, must be done with um, after both engines are started, 
Make sure the hydraulic systems are in full operation. Full right. Full left. Neutral on the rudder. Elevators full down. Full up. Neutral. Other ones full left. Full right. And neutral. We can now set the auto brake system. And once we've completed our engine warm up, we're ready for departure. So that's how we taxi normally on single engine. Obviously, it can be done after arrival as well if there's a long taxi into the gate. And that's another opportunity where we, we would use single engine taxi. But as always, on the Airbus 320, engine one is operating, engine two is the engine that is uh, shut down. Any questions on that? Drop me a chat. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.